<laughs> and Chloe has got a real live dog. So Chloe, do you sleep with this little one? No. <laughs> I sleep with my bears though, but since I had, I have bears, but I had them since I was a baby. So who who's saying they have bears? Who's this one? Chloe. Chloe. Oh, okay. Okay. All righty. There we go, Mrs. Alfrey. Okay. All right. I love it. All right. So should we go ahead and get started? Oh, okay. So David sleeps with his dog and his dad sleeps with a teddy. That <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> I love that. Everyone that knows. great? <laughs> oh, my. Very special. Yes. Oh. Uh, all right, boys and girls, I'm so glad you're here and that you are ready for bed and going to share an evening with us. And we have lots of fun all month long. How many of you are reading and putting minutes on those reading logs? Anyone? Yay! Good job. Um all right. I'm reading the BFG oh, nice. chapter book. Nice. So when you make sure you mark that down and um, so that you get lots of minutes. All right. So we have someone with us tonight. And what, what we're doing is next week on Thursday, we have a live reading. And the next week on Thursday and the next week on Thursday. And then some of the Tuesdays. Um, we have recorded uh, reading, so you'll want to watch your email because we'll email you and tell you and w watch Facebook when we tell you they're coming. Tonight we have somebody reading for us, and I know that he's reading one of his favorite books, and um, he's very excited to be here tonight. We have Mr. Alfrey with us. So <laughs> There. Oh, that's excellent. Favorite authors and one of his favorite books. He's sitting in front of the fireplace right now. Ready well, I am so happy to see all of you. We have missed seeing you so much. And just to see you for a moment is wonderful. And I can't wait until we're all back together again. So, oh, Mr. Alfrey, what book do you want to share? What book and what author? And then I'm just going to let you start reading. Okay. Right. I will share my screen here for you, and you will see. This is, as Miss Alfrey said, one of my favorite books. Can you see it okay, Miss Alfrey? Yes. 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 <laughs> It's called The Wretched Stone, and it's written and illustrated by Chris Van Allsburg. One reason I love this author, he's one of my favorite authors, and I have several of his books, is because he draws the most beautiful illustrations to go with his stories. And you might know some of the books he's written. Um, let me see. Have you heard of... Jumanji? Well, Chris Van Osberg wrote the book Jumanji before there was a movie. And he wrote another book that was turned into a movie that I probably guess you have seen. It is The Polar Express. Did you know that was written by Chris Van Osberg? So we are going to read The Wretched Stone by Chris Van Osberg. This is a book that you will need to use your imagination to think and to understand. Uh, it's a fun story and it's in the form of a diary or a log from a ship. So let's see what happens. Excerpts from the log of the Rita Ann, Randall Ethan Hope, Captain. May 8, we finished bringing supplies aboard early this morning. At midday, we left on the tide and found a fresh breeze just outside the harbor. 
It is a good omen that our voyage has begun with fair winds and a clear sky. May 9. The first mate, Mr. Howard, has brought together a fine crew. These men are not only good sailors, they are accomplished in other ways. They have a beautiful ship. Many read and have borrowed books from my small library. Some play musical instruments, and there are a few good storytellers among them. May 17. Our passage is going well. The usual boredom that comes with many days at sea is not present on this ship. When the members of this clever crew are not on duty, I find them singing and dancing and amusing each other with tales of past adventure. Doesn't that look fun? June 5, land ho! Slightly before sunset, we spotted an island. I have consulted my charts, but do not see it recorded. This is odd, since ships have sailed through these waters for years. Apparently, they have all missed this small place. We are low on water and would be happy to find fresh fruit growing here. Tomorrow, I will take some men ashore and look about. June 6. I have just returned from the island. It is strange indeed. The vegetation is lush but not a single plant bears fruit. The air has an odor that at first seems sweet and pleasant, then becomes an overpowering stink. I saw no sign of animal life, not even an insect. We found a spring that had water too bitter to drink. We also discovered something quite extraordinary, which I have brought aboard. See what they found. It is a rock approximately two feet across. It is roughly textured, gray in color, but has a portion of it as flat and smooth as glass. From this surface comes a glowing light that is quite beautiful and ple pleasing to look at. The thing is unbelievably heavy requiring six strong men to lift it. With great effort, we were able to get it aboard and into the forward hold. We have set sail and are underway again. Mm -hmm. June 10, the crew is fascinated by the rock. When not needed on deck, they are down below, gazing in silence at the peculiar light it gives off. I miss the music and storytelling that had become part of our ship's life. The last few days have passed quite slowly. The men, however, seem perfectly content. I'm sure their interest in the stone will fade away soon. They're just looking at the stone. June 13, something is wrong with the crew. They can barely speak, and though they swing through the rigging more quickly than ever, they walk the decks in a clumsy, stooped-over fashion. Last night I heard shrieks coming from the forward hold. I believe they have contracted some kind of fever that came on board with the stone. I told Mr. Howard that tomorrow I will have the thing thrown overboard. June 14. This morning I woke to find the deck deserted. The wheel was tied steady with a rope. I believe Mr. Howard, who spent some time around the rock, told the men about my plan to get rid of it. They have now locked themselves in the forward hold. They apparently believe in their feverish state that I can sail this boat alone while they sit around that wretched stone. June 15, we are in grave danger. A powerful storm is headed this way. 
All morning long, the wind has grown steadily stronger. The sky is filled with dark clouds. I'm unable to shorten the sails by myself. With this much canvas up, we will surely be blown over and sink when the full force of the storm arrives. I am going forward again to try to get the crew to work. All of our lives depend on it. This is, I'm sure, my last entry. What I have just seen is so horrifying, I can barely have the strength to write it down. After I pounded at the door to the forward hold, it finally swung open. But it was not a man who opened the door. It was an ape. The whole crew had turned into hairy beasts. They just sat there grinning at that terrible rock. They don't understand a word I say. We are doomed. All they're doing is staring at the rock. June 16. The storm has passed. The Rita Ann is still afloat, but both masts and rudder are broken. The stone has gone dark. We were struck by lightning twice during the storm. I believe that was the cause. Unfortunately, the crew is unchanged. They are still beasts, but seem sad and lost without the glowing rock. I have moved them back to their quarters. We have food for two weeks. I am hopeful for a rescue. June 19, I have made an encouraging discovery. I'm playing the violin and reading to the crew. It is having a positive effect. They're walking upright and have an alert look in their eyes. I was June 24. I was in the forward hold today. A dull glow was coming from the stone. I have covered it and will keep the compartment locked. So they're having I love to read. June 28, I am happy to report that the men have returned to normal. It seems that those who knew how to read recovered most quickly. June 30, we are saved. A ship has been spotted off of our starboard side. I have decided to scuttle the Rita Ann. There is only one place for the wretched stone. Before we abandon ship, I will set a fire that will send this vessel and her cargo to the bottom of the sea. July 12, our rescuers have left us in the harbor town of Santa Pongo. One by one, the crew should be able to sign on to ships passing through and work their way home. We have made an agreement not to talk about the strange events that took place aboard the Rita Ann. The men appear to have recovered completely, though some show an unnatural appetite for the fruit that is available here. Oh, look at that. What fruit is that? And I wonder why those sailors liked that like those bananas. Well, I hope you liked the story, The Wretched Stone. And I want to ask a question. What do you think that stone could represent? What, what might the stone, if the stone is supposed to make us think of something, what could it make us think of? Alejandro, are you raising your hand? Do you want to tell? Yeah. What do you think the stone could be? Maybe that stone, maybe that stone makes monkey, makes people transform to monkeys. Yeah, it makes it. I think it did. You're right. You're right. R2, what could the stone be like? That, like, it's a warning that the, the, the island they found is like a magic island. Oh, yeah, something magic don't on that take island. more stuff of the island. Right, that's right. They should be very careful because they... Okay, 
Arissa? I think he's imagining the rock could represent God. Mm, that could be. Or maybe he's yeah. magic. Yeah. So I won't go back to the picture, but do you remember the one picture where they were all set sitting uh, standing around and sitting and they were looking at the stone and it was glowing on their face does that remind you of anything maybe we do sometimes when we sit together we might be in the living room or somewhere and we're looking at something if the lights are off it's glowing what could that be any guess Oh, Landon says the TV, maybe it's like a television. And all they did was sit and stare at the television and they turned into apes because they didn't, they stopped reading and singing and dancing. Right? Well, I don't know. You know, Chris Van Ellsberg doesn't tell us in his story if it's a TV. I don't know. That's, we have to, we have to decide, but maybe it's a bit like that. And maybe, oh, I'm afraid to say this. Maybe it's a bit like our computer. We have to sit all day and stare at our computer, don't we? So I will be glad, yeah, and the phone, Jorge, that's right. We just hold our phone all the time and just sit and people just sit like this and you will look at them. And they don't talk to each other. They just look at their phone. So. Like zombies. Yeah, like zombies. You're right. Or like monkeys, as Chris Van Allsburg said. Okay. So anyway, I think it's a very fun story, but it's a great reminder how important reading and music and playing and dancing are. And um, I hope that even during all this time, you're finding time to do those other things too. Read and sing and do music and dance and play because that is very important. Well, I just want to say that I love all of you and I'm so glad to see you tonight. I'm gonna to pray for us and then uh, Miss Alfrey, uh, you can close uh, with whatever you want next, okay? But let's pray together and I'll just pray you have a good night's rest, all right? Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us and being with us, even though we're spread out in so many places, even tonight around the world, you are with us. And I thank you for our students at ICS Lima. I thank you for our teachers and staff, and I pray that you would give us all a good night's rest, watch over, and keep us safe and well so that we can serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mr. Alfrey, very much. That was an, a wonderful book, which I've heard many times, but I always am reminded that talking to each other and reading and doing those things help us to be better people and to be um, better friends to each other, right? And even in the middle of this, we need to be reading, 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 just not, not just in I Love to Read Month, but all the time. Because if you wanna be a good reader, what do you have to do? You have to read, exactly. So, all right, thank you very much, Mr. Alfrey. Ms. Searson, do you have anything to, to to say, to tell us or to share? Well, I was wondering what favorite books our students have been reading because Mr. Alfrey was sharing his favorite book. So I was just wondering what favorite book have you been reading and which book could you recommend to somebody oh. else? Nice. Do any of you have a book with you that you would like to hold up for us and okay, show us? Arissa, what book have you been reading? Turn on your microphone, Arissa. Me. I read a, a book of, well, I read a book of 
Japanese that my dad gives me. Lovely. So a Japanese book that your dad has gotten has gotten you. That's really wonderful. And Alejandro, what have you been reading? In the library, I got two books. One, one small, one giant. Giant one. Lovely. Nice. And and R2, what can you recommend? This one's the small one. Oh, uh, I can see. Like <laughs> there is a large one there. That's definitely a large one. <laughs> so R2, what are you reading and can you recommend it? It's like a real version of Pinocchio. Oh, a real life version of Pinocchio. And can you recommend it? How many stars would you give it? Mm, all of the stars that are here. Lots of stars. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> and uh, Sophia. How um, would you I would recommend Molly, Millie, Molly, Mandy, but I took the cover off. Millie, Molly, Mandy. I used to read Millie, Molly, Mandy <laughs> a long uh, time it's ago. Got lots of little stories, but it's kind of like a little storybook because every time it says, every chapter it says, once upon a time, once upon a time. Lovely, lovely. And you're enjoying reading it? And you like the stars? Yes. You like that story? I've been reading it like in the, in the afternoon and in the night before I go Wonderful. to bed. Oh, you're very committed to reading it then. That's wonderful. Very wonderful. Anyone else who's got a wonderful book to share? Oh, Jorge, what are you, what are you reading? Well, I have read a lot of books. I have a book of history that mm -hmm. talks beginning from the evolution. Yes. From the Bible, obviously. I'm reading the second book of Narnia called The Lion, the Closet, and the Witch. And oh, yes. The Lion, lion the Closet, and the was... Witch. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Isn't I it? had that yes. one. Yes, I <laughs> had that one. I had, I'm reading another book called Without Beginning and End that is two in Spanish. And that Lovely. book is, is very funny. Great, that sounds wonderful. You're reading a lot, I can see, Jorge. Some, some phrases are very, well, strange. Ah, and Chloe, I think you were reading The Dog Man, is that right? Yes, ma'am, it is. And you're enjoying it? Yes. Excellent, excellent. It. Very wonderful. Dogman sounds very fun. Mm. And David, Harry Potter on the elect on an electric tab. Oh, I see. Harry Potter on an electric tablet. Yeah. Look. <laughs> now that's a long book, um, I should think. This is How the many... electric ta ah, tablet. Ah, yes. yes. And uh, um, this is Harry Potter. I'm going to... No. Look, here it's a Harry Potter. Wonderful. How many pages have you read so far? Um, I don't know. But what I know is that I read 500% of the book. Oh, well, that's quite a lot of the book already then, isn't it? Quite a lot of the book. Excellent. Excellent. Anybody else who's got a book that they want to recommend? Mateo, what are you reading? The Bible. Ah, and what part of the Bible are you reading? Lots of parts. Um, so which parts have you been reading? Um, Matthew and Genesis. Oh. Um, oh, you've been reading all over the Bible then. Uh-huh. So you, have you... I did. Have you been reading the birth stories of Jesus in Matthew? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I almost, um, I read a lot of Matthew. 
um, uh, before the the I love to read month, but now I'm reading most of Matthew. Excellent, excellent. So, did you know you get double points for reading the Bible? Yes. Please oh, say yes. Again. <laughs> Miss Houston? Oh, yes, Giovanni, yes. If you read the Bible in Spanish, does it still count double? Because absolutely. books in Spanish count the half. In the Bible yes, count. absolutely, Giovanni. Oh. You can read the Bible in Spanish. Yeah, that would oh. be great. Yes, Jorge's already reading lots of things in Spanish, I think, aren't you? Yes, absolutely, you can. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so now, last thing to ask you, when you say good night for your bedtime, what do you say to your parents? Is there something special you say? Does your mom say anything special to you, like sleep tight? Yeah, my mom and dad said that God protect me and that I, just, and that I sleep well. That's good. So your mom and dad say, may God protect you and you sleep well. Does anyone say, um, sleep well and don't let the bugs bite? <laughs> no? Anyone say anything special? <laughs> Artu, does your mom say anything special? Does she sing to your brother? Mm, like sing. Like we yeah. have something that sings on its own. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you listen to something that's that's playing, do you? That sounds yes. good. And Sophia, what happens at your bedtime? Um, sometimes they um pray for me. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes when I have a really bad tummy ache, they pray for me. Oh. Or if I'm having trouble getting to sleep, That's they'll pray good. for me even when I'm having trouble. That's good. So they pray and they commit you or to Or usually God. I just say goodnight and give them a hug and a kiss. Lovely. 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 Anybody else has got anything to share about their mom and dad saying goodnight to them? Not my mom Alejandra. and dad. Uh, well, my book was this one. I I was I was not I was not. How lovely! So your mom says, Chloe. I she says, good night to you in a very special way, which tells you that she loves you. Well, as Mr. Alfrey said, we love you too. And we are going to say good night from us now. So good night to you. And good night from Mr. Alfrey. And good night from Mrs. Alfrey. And good night from Mrs. Old. And good night from Miss Moore. And good night from Mrs. Giuliani. Bye. Bye. Good night. Hi. Good night. 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 Good, good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Yes, good night. Good night. Bye. Have a great night. Good night, Andre. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night <laughs> but me, I know that. Yes. But I know Ken. <laughs> Oh, I will see you in the morning at reading, okay? You, um, get me out of the...
No, you will come to reading and you'll see what we're going to do. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye bye, Asiel. See you tomorrow. Good night, Asiel. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye bye everyone. Bye. bye. <laughs> bye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Good, Good night. night. God bless. <laughs> Thank you.